Hi everyone, I'm Gold Derby News and Features Editor Ray Richmond, and I'm here today with Dominic Sessa, who portrays boarding school student Angus Tully in Alexander Payne's The Holdovers. So, Dominic, this film promotion thing is obviously brand new to you. How are you coping so far? I'm doing okay so far. I mean, uh, just kind of taking it as it comes, but uh, just really excited to, to obviously be, be celebrating this film and um, th the work that everybody did on it. So. Uh, yeah, it was you know, almost two years ago now that we did it, so finally returning to it now and, and seeing people seeing it is, is great. Take us through um, that process, Dominic, of how a newcomer like you came to be cast in a big studio release like The Holdovers. You were a student at Deerfield Academy, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know, uh, participated heavily in our, our drama program at Deerfield. Um, so when my casting director, uh, or sorry, my my teacher, at, my acting teacher at school mentioned there was a casting director coming to look for some kids potentially to like be in background of this movie that might be using Deerfield as a location. I, I jumped right on that and thought, you know, that'd be cool to be in the background, maybe be in a desk at a classroom scene or something. Um, but immediately when I met the casting director, Susan Shotmaker, she, uh, was really interested in, in something that I, I was bringing, and that's kind of how I initiated the process of pursuing the, the lead role uh, with Jumadi. But you couldn't necessarily imagine that, wow, they actually want me to, they want me to, to be the lead here. You just thought you were gonna be background or, or some kind of side, side thing. Yeah, no, I mean, I never, because I'd never even auditioned for a movie before, so I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how callbacks worked, you know? So the fact that they were asking me to, to audition again, like again and again, I didn't really fully appreciate how good of a sign that was, you know, for especially you for- weren't like putting, You weren't putting together that, oh, maybe the sixth sixth audition- Yeah, really like <laughs> yeah. Film. maybe by number six, it, it was starting to hit me. <laughs> but right, yeah. Were you, um, were you familiar with who Alexander Payne was when, when you heard he was auditioning actors? Uh, I was, yeah, actually because we, when I was in eighth grade, we read The Descendants and um, studied, studied that novel in class and then uh, ultimately watched the, the adaptation, which Alexander uh, did. But uh, that was really the only work that I was, I guess, sort of familiar with. I mean, I, Sideways was, you know, too... You know, I was a baby then, and I, election was before. But this is me. about wine, and you're a kid. Yeah, it, exactly. So I mean, uh, yeah, I wasn't super familiar, but you know, obviously, once I knew who was working on it, that's when I had to educate myself, and I found uh, election was definitely one of the more uh, informative uh, pieces that that I referenced for uh, in preparation for this. How intimidating was it to go from? finishing your fall play in high school to suddenly being on the set of a high profile feature surrounded by lights and a giant crew, probably kind of surreal, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was, it was very surreal. And, um, but at the same time, I think I was so hyper-focused and so in it, uh, you know, in the moment every day that I just kind of, just kind of got into the groove of things and was able to let all of those, you know, machines and cameras just kind of subside and and really uh, be be in the moment with the characters. Especially, you know, Paul and, and Devine are so good at, at making a new person like me comfortable in, in that setting. So they they didn't like try to haze you or anything. Or try <laughs> to like try to like screw around with the new kid and have you, you know. And do practical jokes and whoopee cushions on your seat, right? <laughs> no, no, they they were great, and I mean, yeah, they totally trusted me in my my creative process, my just just my artistry in general. I mean, they they put their trust in me, and I'm so grateful for that because, uh, you know, if they showed any sign, even if they you know were worried about me and, and you know my ability to, to to do well in this, if they showed any sign of that it probably would have rubbed off on me, and I'm, I'm thankful for them being confident in me. What was, um, 
the biggest challenge for you, Dominic, working on a film for the first time? <clears throat> I'm guessing way different than doing live theater, obviously. Yeah, well, well, that's the thing. I mean, with with theater, which was my my comfort zone for for so long, you know, you you have a extensive rehearsal process. You can can go back to your room and and think about the notes that you received. But it, when you're on a film set, you know, everything is is out of order, and you know, it, it's it's by the minute. So uh, every every take is every second is is worth something. So. You really have to be on it, and that turnaround on notes. Like when Alexander would give me a note, I, I'd have to get better at just being able to try to execute that instantly, almost, you know, because um, we're rolling. So that was the biggest challenge. I think just the the immediacy of everything. Yeah, the notes you get, I guess, on a um, in a play, mm -hmm. or, uh, you, you're, you're just you're able to really absorb everything over weeks rather than. Hours or days. Totally. Like film. Totally. Yeah. What kind of notes did you get from Alexander? Were they were they pretty clear? Um. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was really good at, at simplifying things for me. Um. You know, he, he always would say this. The, the quote he would use is, "You want to uh, the best film actors they they show but they don't feel or they sorry they feel but they don't show." Um, so it's, it's all about feeling those emotions internally and, and having those kind of fester uh, behind, behind the eyes or whatever, behind that mask, and letting the camera find, find all of that. Um, and that was a, you know, a big transition for me in, in terms of you know, theater to film. Because theater is so different. It's so, well, first off, it's so dialogue and so, so chatty based compared with film. Mm -hmm. um, did you, what, what, was there a risk of you, did you err on the side of overacting, trying to do too much? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was the biggest challenge with uh, my audition process. I think that's why my audition process went so long, was because for, for a long time I was, uh, you know, preparing like a performance for, for these, these casting directors and, and Alexander, and it just wasn't going to be, uh, it just wasn't going to read on on on, on film, so uh, that that was the thing I, I just needed to get to was just being natural and comfortable and just you know human, <laughs> I guess, for lack of a better word. But they stuck with you through that, even though you might have been trying too hard in the auditions. Right. They saw something and they saw something in you. Yeah, I had um, the right hair. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. Basically, thank God you had the hair. The hair is what got you the job. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No. That. I, yeah. They did. You know. I don't know what it is they saw in me through the process, but um, you know, thankfully they they saw something because I felt confident that I could get there and and be good in this movie and and be prepared for it. I just needed them to realize that too. <laughs> well, it was probably. Dominic, that confidence that came through. I mean, in, even in, even when you were pushing too hard in the auditions, mm. you know, the, the confidence, because so few people you're, with your age and experience level have any kind of comfort level on camera, especially when working in a, you know, it's so, you gotta be so intimidating working with, at the level you're working at, but you, it sounds like you, you know, you've, on some level, you felt like you belonged yeah, because it's just fun, you know. I mean, it's just it's just a good time. I, I really genuinely enjoy doing it, and I think that's that's the key. Is I have a passion for this thing, and um, that that passion is is really alive in me right now, and, and and it's burning hot. So I think I'm at that point in my life right now where I feel really happy that I've found something that makes me happy, uh, and that's just what I think took a lot of the stress away from it and made it easy kind of <laughs> and yeah you, you didn't feel any like any pressure to carry the movie once you're doing it you're like oh my god i'm in the middle of this oh my god i'm a star i've got to carry this thing yeah i think th that is definitely a concern you know because i i put my put myself in alexander's shoes i put myself in you know these the producer's shoes and you know how the, the optics of that for them of this this new guy coming in and you know, kind of holding this this really important role that you know is consequential for for the for the film and how it ultimately ends up. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely felt that weight, but um, I like that. You know, I feel personally I work the best when I'm under pressure. So 
Yeah. How closely uh, did you identify with the uh, arrogant, pissed off Angus, having <laughs> attended a boarding school yourself? And uh, yeah. do, you, do you feel that maybe helped you embody the character? Yeah, I think so, for sure. And I think one of the things that is uh, prevalent with these uh, elite boarding schools, you know, back then and especially today, is a lot of these kids, you see in the story, you know, a lot of them feel that their whole lives are mapped out for them and they have to follow this very specific trajectory. Um, but I think the challenge for Angus is he, he doesn't really know what he, where he's going, what he wants to do, and you know, just where he kind of stands in the world. Uh, and I, I felt, you know, I had a similar feeling, especially when I was in high school and, you know, I wasn't able to play hockey, the thing that I most identified with. Um, and, you know, I'm surrounded by a lot of kids who were, you know, either really smart, really athletic, and I kind of just felt stuck in the middle somewhere. Um, so I was definitely able to identify with that in a lot of ways. Talk maybe a little bit about working with DC as in pros. You're, you're <laughs> constantly on camera with Paul Giamatti and Divine uh, Joy Randolph. How a uh, pretty amazing situation to get into for your first for your first job in a movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, right. I didn't know what these people were going to be like at all. You know, I didn't. Uh, they were celebrities in my mind, you know, like I, I didn't know how they how they were in real life, but it was so such a pleasure to, to get there and within the first hour of meeting both of them, how just their their candor and their, their care for, for me and my success in this process, uh, they just they really welcomed me with, with open arms and were so willing to, to just offer every bit of advice that I, I, I could need. Um, so yeah, it was, you know, how am I gonna work with these people are they gonna like me are they gonna think I'm good enough you know whatever it is but there was all of that was uh, pretty much gone mitigated within the first five <laughs> minutes of meeting them and it sounds like you got along incredibly well with your director you guys yes. were able to communicate on kind of a relaxed genuine level it sounds like mm, definitely I mean Alexander is uh, I had so much respect for him as you know, not only as a director, as a person, um, he he really like even even after we finished filming this movie, for you know the whole time they were in editing and uh, you know working in post and all that, he would call me every you know all the time and let me know how things were going and ask me about what's going on. So yeah, he was he was incredible to work with as a director, but now you know he's really become a, a role model for me and sort of this this beacon of, of, of wisdom, if, if you will. And leading you through this whole promotion process too, which is a whole other job in itself. <laughs> exactly, yeah, exactly. How does it feel to be getting these rave reviews for your performance from you know, the New York Times, and Washington Post and everybody? It, it, that's gotta be pretty heady stuff. I mean, you know, again, to go from high school and then, and then Carnegie Mellon to suddenly being you know, considered kind of the next big thing in movies. Yeah, I mean, I, tr you know, I try not to be, you know, read everything that's out there. And, uh, you know, if people send me things, I'll, I'll definitely read it. And, and I'm flattered to get positive reception. But yeah, I guess I, I had no idea how people were going to feel about this, especially me being this new person who's never done this before. I, I, had, no, I had no idea. So you know, I knew at least my mom was going to like it, and you know that was a positive, <laughs> uh, and th that was a good thing, and I that would make me happy. So, if anybody else liked it, that was just icing on the cake. And like you say, I mean, the people, there's such great reception, and it's you know, I can't believe it. So your mom actually liked it. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I hope so. She did. I think. And now you're and now you're actually you know part of the Oscar conversation too is a legitimate challenge which I'm sure you've also heard. I mean, listen, uh, that I mean that is beyond anything I could even possibly imagine. Just just seeing myself in this movie is you know has basically capped my my level of excitement for now. And I you know to to think about awards, especially something as big as that, I'm I don't know. If that came at some point down the line, uh, that would be incredible. But uh, for right now, I'm just just happy to have you know been lucky enough to make a movie. 
Are your friends treating you any differently now that you're a big shot? <laughs> Not my real friends, no. <laughs> no, my real friends are, are the ones who keep me grounded, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely... Uh, I think the, the, the most exciting part was just being able to, to reconnect with a lot of people in my life. You know, people, old teachers, old friends, old role models that I've had, uh, old coaches who I, you know, I just haven't spoken to in years and never really knew the next time I would be able to connect with them. And, you know, now they're seeing trailers for my movie and seeing my, my name uh, and stuff and they're reaching out to me. So that, that's that been a really special thing is to, to touch base with those people that, you know, really, I guess, helped me get to this point. Is all this uh, marketing and stuff kind of screwing up your ability to attend Carnegie Mellon and, uh, and go to class? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm taking a leave of absence um, right now from the school. It is a you know, conservatory program. It's, you know, very, you, you got to be there for, for your other classmates. So um, I, I, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm unable to be there right now. Uh, but I mean, for, for the best, I mean, this is for the right reasons. It's, you never know when this kind of stuff will come along, if it'll ever come along again. So, you know, while it's happening right now, I just got to enjoy it and, and really soak it in. Well, I mean, this is the whole reason you go to drama school was to, you know, you hope to eventually at some point land anything even close to this kind of role. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a kind of, <laughs> I guess I skipped a few steps. <laughs> it's great. You know what? Good for you. We're going to actually end things there, uh, Dominic. Uh, the Holdovers is playing in theaters everywhere this holiday season. Uh, Dominic Sessa, best of luck to you this award season, and thanks for joining us today at Gold Derby. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.